Hi everyone. So today we have a special guest, Dr. Payam, right here. Hi. Thank you so much for joining my channel. <laughs> thank right. Thank you. Thank you. What and a pleasure. Dr. Payam is going to introduce himself to us, and he's going to show us how to do the epsilon delta proof for this limit. So all yours. <laughs> Hi, so <laughs> my name is Payam, and um, <laughs> it's amazing because I like food, pie, and I like math, pie. In particular, I love limits, which we're gonna do today. <laughs> so today we'll do the very, very scary epsilon delta definition of a limit, and hopefully you'll see that it's not that bad. All right, so today our goal is to prove the limit of x goes to 1 of 2x plus 3 equals to 5 in a very, very, very rigorous way. And you may ask, why do we need it so rigorous? So that everyone is happy. The physicists are happy. The mathematicians are happy. Everyone else is happy too, because it's a happy world. All right, so limit x goes to 1 of 2x plus 3 equals to 5. What does that mean using the definition? It means that for all epsilon greater than zero, there is delta greater than zero such that for all x, x, uh, if absolute value of x minus 1 is less than delta, then absolute value of 2x plus 3 minus 5 is less than epsilon. And I know it's really scary. There's a lot of English <laughs> words here, a lot of weird symbols, but let's try to deconstruct it. And the Im very important thing to know about math, especially here, is you usually like to think, read things from right to left. So for the moment, let's ignore all this stuff, you know. For all epsilon, there is a delta such that for all x, blah, blah, blah. We want to focus on this part. If absolute value of x minus 1 is less than delta, then absolute value of 2x plus 3 minus 5 is less than epsilon. What does that really mean? And think of, you know, delta and epsilon as being very small. It means really that if x is very close to 1, then 2x plus 3 is very close to 5. And notice, this is just what we want. Limit x goes to 1 of 2x plus 3 equals to 5 means that if x is close to 1, then 2x plus 3 is close to 5. So this is not complete gibberish. Hopefully, it kind of sort of makes sense. And now, let's look at the other part. For all epsilon greater than 0, there is delta. Whenever you see there is delta, you have to find this delta. So if I give you an epsilon, you have to find me some delta depending on epsilon such that this is true. And so let's do this first. And for those proofs, it usually goes into two parts. The first part is the prep work. Part one, namely finding delta. It's, it's like finding Nemo, but in math, you want to find delta. Okay. And for this, let's deconstruct this. So if x minus 1 is less than delta, then let's see what happens here. Then 2x plus 3 minus 5. Look, there's just some algebra that's screaming out of here. So 2x plus 3 minus 5, it actually is 2x minus 2. And another thing that screams out here is this 2 that needs to be factored out. So it's 2 times x minus 1. And now let's focus on our goal. What do we want ultimate for this to happen? We want 2x plus 3 minus 5 to be less than epsilon. So let be, let you know this whole expression be less than epsilon. What does that mean for x minus 1? It means that x minus 1 is less than absolute value of is less than epsilon over 2. Notice that this sort of gives us a good um, good guess for delta because you now what does this say? It kind of says that if x minus 1 is less than epsilon over 2, then if you go back this whole chain of inequalities, then this expression is less than epsilon. So 
It seems that a good guess for delta would be epsilon over 2. And in fact, let's do this on this next new neat blackboard. So our guess is delta is epsilon over 2. Of course, this is just a guess. We have not shown that, that this implies this. But that's what we want to do now in our second part, is actually our actual proof. So part two. Actually, uh, proving this is true. Is true. So let's start with you know, the big phrase of math. Whenever you take analysis, it's a higher level math course, all the proofs begin like that. It says just let epsilon be greater than zero. It's a whole magic formula. It's the equivalent of abracadabra, but in math. So let epsilon greater than zero and let delta be epsilon over two. And notice what we're really doing now. We're going back to this original expression. And we're now going from left to right. So we have epsilon, we have our delta. All we want to show is that if x minus 1 is less than delta, then 2x plus 3 minus 5 is less than epsilon. So we just say, suppose x minus 1 is less than delta, which is epsilon over 2, then let's look at what happens to our original expression. OK, so then we want to show that this expression, 2x plus 3 minus 5, we ultimately want to show that this is less than epsilon. So once this is less than epsilon, we are done and can go home very happy. You know. Um, but look, we've already done all this work. Before, we found that this expression is precisely equal at absolute value of x minus 1. But now remember that absolute value of x minus 1 is less than epsilon over 2. So this is 2 times epsilon over 2. Okay. And now look at the most exciting part of the proof. The 2's cancel out, and you get epsilon. So ultimately what happens, if you suppose that x minus 1 is close enough, is epsilon over 2 enough, close enough, then f of x minus 5, so 2x plus c minus 5, is indeed less than epsilon. And then you're done. So QED, you put this little box to declare victory. All right, thank you very much.